Welcome and thank you for joining us at our second international meeting, Stop Hyperflexion. Thank you for joining us in Paris or on the live stream. Our main subject is hyperflexion, but of course this implements the brutal aids, blue tongues, over-tightened nosebands and many other related issues. This is the list of the speakers today, present here in Paris or by video conference. I think it's great to see how many professionals of the horse world are willing to work towards a better protection of competition horses. Many people thought the speakers of the September meeting were members of the Collective Pour les Chevaux. For the sake of clarity, except me, none of the speakers is member of the Collective. This is our program for today. A huge thank you to our speakers. Some of them were with us in September, others have joined us. Thank you very much for your confidence and your pro bono work for the horses. I also wanted to thank the people who supported us with the crowdfunding. This wouldn't be possible without all of them. And a very big thank you to Doris Ipsmiller, who sponsors this meeting by financing the live stream, video conferences and replays. Thank you to Patrick Galou, who will manage the PowerPoints, and Françoise, Sylvie, Marise et Sarah for your help. Please note your questions and ideas during the presentations for the roundtable at the end of the day. So, why did I organize the second international meeting? As in all systems using pr propaganda to sell unhealthy products, like the cigarette industry, for example, it's not the system that will provide you the information about how unhealthy their product really is, unless there is a legal obligation to do so. The marketing behind hyperflexion is very strong and worldwide. As it was the case in the cigarette industry, using bad training practices is sold as cool, sexy and elegant. On the left you see a picture that was chosen by the Facebook page of the Paris Olympics to promote the discipline of dressage. They thought this hyperflex horse with his pain face, open mouth and blue tongue was chic. Longines seems to think all this is elegant. One of the reasons why you are present on social media is to be able to react on this kind of images and ask the authors to remove the publication. Because many well-intentioned people copy what they see everywhere and what they have been told to be good for their horse and indispensable to win competitions. How did this couple persuade everyone that this would be horse-friendly conduct, indispensable to train a horse? So this system will not stop promoting hyperflexion unless there is a legal obligation to do so, or unless we, as well-informed professionals or riders, keep up the pressure needed to change the system. With this meeting, my aim is to continue to alert and inform. But as much as I believe in education and transmission of good practices, I strongly believe that professionals and riders should go back to the competition grounds to politely speak up when witnessing bad practices and to start document and file complaints as all the other options to change the system seem to have failed. It is weird it's up to us to spend so much of our time and money in changing the system. Sometimes I think, what the hell am I doing with my life? But then I think of what it was that triggered me a few years ago. It was the sight of the riders of the Cadre Noir in France doing this to their horses. I was shocked, disappointed and angry, as these riders are supposed to be the guardians of classical French equitation. I was angry for the horses in the first place, but also for all the instructors I knew. What kind of an example these riders were setting in this place being one of France's most important institutions for the formation of riding instructors? I decided to try, at least try, to change the system by alerting and informing on what so many people found to be a disastrous situation. So I founded the Collective Pour les Chevaux in July 2020. One third of the 24 founding members are riding instructors. We concentrate on dressage, but not exclusively, as bad training practices are of course to be found in any discipline. We concentrate on the high-level competitions, as those riders and trainers are supposed to be exemplary. Not perfect, exemplary. And we concentrate on hyperflexion, as it is a method as well as a symptom of bad training practices. Stopping hyperflexion implies stopping blue tongues and over-tightened nosebands. This was our goal but it seems it's going to be rather complicated to get there. Hyperflexion can be a voluntary training technique, a very visible symptom of long-term incorrect training, or a symptom of a momentary mistake in applying the aids. 
As a training technique, it is used as a shortcut to the much longer but correct training scale. It is a way to control horses for those who don't take the time to create a trustful relationship. Hyperflexion is also used to create spectacular movements and it imitates the roundness of a rassemblée. I think many riders and trainers have the impression their horse is working well when they see the muscles of the neck bulge. What they do not seem to see is that it is not the muscles needed to better carry the rider. Also, the muscles bulge because they are pushed outwards when the horse's neck is shortened. When those horses are not held in a shortened competition frame and the saddle doesn't cover up the back, we can actually see that some muscles are missing and others are overdeveloped. I think the FEI vets should talk to the riders and trainers when they see this kind of musculature. And of course, the FEI communication team should know by now that these images cannot serve as promotion of good practices. But why not use them for a huge international informative campaign about bad training practices? So, according to the collective polychevaux, hyperflexion begins as soon as the horse's nose is brought behind the vertical by the rider, whether on foot, in the saddle, or driving, and whether the neck is high or low. It is crucial to understand we do not consider all hyperflexion situations to be abusive. We are not saying we are abusing our horses as soon as their nose is a little behind the vertical for a few strides. This misunderstanding is used by the system to depict us as extremists. What we are saying is that we should always avoid taking on and holding the horse's nose behind the vertical, whether the neck is high or low. Were all our riding instructors extremists for teaching us to avoid being behind the vertical? They told us to avoid be being behind the vertical because the various situations of hyperflexion are at best unnecessary and burdensome, at worst counterproductive and, yes, abusive. Another reason to depict us as extremists is that we consider LDR as a form of hyperflexion. When you use LDR as a standard posture, you will use it frequently and in a prolonged manner, which is not the best choice to make for your horse's well-being. When you use LDR as a standard posture, you are never very far from Rolkur. Suppose we accepted LDR. Will the situation then get better? Of course not. As prolonged and excessive LDR, Rolkur, blue tongs, over-tightened nosebands and bullying horses would still persist. That's the whole point. The problem lies right there. As long as we accept LDR, we will get nowhere near the welfare of the horse being paramount at all times. Look at what happened since the FEI accepted LDR in the warm-ups. When you use the vertical as a limit not to be exceeded, you shouldn't come anywhere near roll cure nor prolonged LDR, which means you're less likely to endanger your horse's well-being. FEI tries to make everyone believe that there is no problem. Would the French National Assembly need to write a report published in 2022 with 46 recommendations to ensure the welfare of horses at the Paris Olympics if there was no problem? Would the Equine Ethics and Wellbeing Commission survey of 2022 show the following results? 78% of the more than 27,000 horse enthusiasts and stakeholders surveyed believe that welfare standards need to be improved in equestrian sports. The biggest concern was training and riding, tech and equipment. This had been confirmed by another survey held by the European Equestrian Federation this year. Horse people surveyed were especially worried about the training techniques of dressage horses. The following comments were frequently made by the equestrians and various stakeholders in the survey of 2022. It already pointed out the horse world is especially worried about the dressage discipline and that the judges are held responsible. The comments were, pain indicators in horses are being ignored by judges. Judges are biased and give higher marks to favorites, even for poorer tests. Unhealthy confirmations and movements are rewarded. Combinations demonstrating clear violations of kind or correct training are being promoted. It's not a secret that the judges hold a huge responsibility. They seem to have forgotten about a neck that is pulled together being regarded as a fundamental mistake in dressage movements, according to their own manual for judging. So, all this being said, it's time to look at what happened with the FEI team that participate, 
to our first international meeting in September. I think there were two positive inputs from the FEI to the Stop Hyperflexion meeting in September. First of all, it seemed the FEI had thought it was a good idea to use the platform of the Stop Hyperflexion meeting as yet another place to promote LDR. One of them tried every single gaslighting technique available on the market as soon as he could isolate me away from other people. But all that came as no surprise. What I did not expect was to receive direct orders to make Crispin shut up on my meeting, where I wished for the speakers to speak up freely. Despite my reaction making it clear the man was not managing an FEI meeting, the next day I was asked to also make Shelby shut up, which of course made me go to Shelby to tell her to continue to speak her mind. And they pulled it off to never give a glimpse of a definition of what hyperflexion means for the FEI. They took no position other than accepting LDR. They had said they would talk about the catalogue of criteria from the German Equestrian Federation. According to the chief steward, Ahmed in Compiègne, this is what the FEI stewards use as a tool to know when to intervene in the warm-up. Did they finally choose not to discuss this tool because it doesn't, it doesn't allow to consider LDR as horse-friendly contact? According to these criteria, using LDR is not horse-friendly conduct. Immediately after the meeting, I was asked to what extent the meeting was international. I sent the names of the countries of the people on live stream and from those who had made the trip to Paris. At the same time, I looked at the FAI campus the team told us about. It came as no surprise to find this image on the front page. But I was confident they would change it as the team was going to debrief the FEI. I took another look a few days ago when I was making my PowerPoint. And what do you know? The picture hasn't changed. As I had been asked, I also sent these two promotional videos to the people who were there giving the feedback to the FEI. So there's promotional videos from, from FEI TV. I took some extracts to show you why I showed them to the FEI team. The color of the tongue. A few days later, I received a mail from a colleague in the FEI veterinary department. She informed me she had attended a meeting online and that many interesting presentations and research had been shown. She was very interested in receiving the different presentations to discuss this important topic. Mainly, the information would be used to open conversations within the department. I informed the speakers about this and sent only a few presentations of those who agreed to just give the information to the FEI without knowing what would be done with it afterwards. We thought it would be interesting that the FEI would invite the speakers to these discussions. Up till today, none of the speakers outside the FEI has been invited to those discussions. I have had no further feedback from the FEI veterinary department. The French Federation had thanked me again for the organization of the meeting and informed me the Animal Welfare Commission would address the issue at its next meeting. There have been several mails sent back and forth between the FEI team and me. The good judge and rider kept trying to convince me of the benefits of LDR as they had been doing during their presentations at the meeting. As there was no real feedback and no propositions of actions to better protect the horses in the warm-up, I took the initiative. Again, I asked, would it be possible for the FEI to organize a meeting between the experts and the team selecting the images broadcast by the FEI and between the experts and the stewards? Is there someone in charge of the stewards of the FEI? Can we talk to the people who organize their training? Can the FEI organize a meeting where the experts and professionals present at the meeting and FEI representatives can decide together on several warm-up sequences, when to intervene, when to give a yellow card, when to give a red card? Would it be possible to organize an observation sequence at a competition with FEI representatives and experts? There was no notable response except someone who sent me the email address of the FEI Department of Communications. 
I asked if there will be any official feedback from the FEI, French or Dutch Federation about the meeting. No answer other than the ongoing promotion of LDR. <clears throat> I tried again. I'm organizing a second meeting in Paris. Several of the guest speakers and participants from the September meeting are on board. You're of course invited, since it's difficult to get officials and stakeholders to come to the meeting. This time I thought I'd bring the meeting to them. On weekend of 27 and 28 April, a competition takes place at Fontainebleau. I'd like to go with a group of experts to the competition on Saturday to observe the warm-up. I'd like to bring together our group of experts and the organizers of the competition, the sponsors, the officials, and why not the riders? Can you help me to organize that, please? The contact person from the FEI answered, good ideas. You can call the FEI communications department. You just contact Professor Natalie Warren, who is the chair of the Equine Ethics and Wellbeing Commission. Following the success of this first symposium and the international participation, you could quite legitimately rename to the International Collective for Horses and thus put your action on an international level. I would go to some of the following 15 competitions to continue observing what happens in the warm-ups. Please let me know if you can join me there. Thank you. No answers on these proposals. In the meantime, I looked at the video I found for the, from the rider of the FEI team. I wouldn't have called the riding I saw there exemplary. I could see LDR was part of the horse's training. But was way worse what could, could be seen in the background of that video on YouTube. A white horse was ridden in hyperflexion with a strong tendency towards rollcure. The discussions with the FEI team became increasingly difficult as I called upon the responsibility in the banalization of rollcure as they had been promoting LDR during the meeting and this video was out there on YouTube. I asked if this video was recorded in 2018 in Switzerland, you know, the only country where hyperflexion is forbidden by law since 2014. The video was taken down, so I suppose the answer was yes, which did not keep the FEI rider and judge to continue to try to sell me their stuff. In November, Equitalion was up. Terrible images and feedback came in while I knew the majority of the FEI team were on site. If the steward had no responsibility whatsoever in the Western warm-up, he was supervising the warm-ups of the FEI World Cup of Dressage. He assured me there had been no problems. During the tests, this rider showed very brutal aids. You'll see the judge at sea stand up to salute 
If the welfare of the horse would really be paramount, shouldn't be she have rung the bell to eliminate this rider? She was, in fact, eliminated a few months later for blood in the mouth during another test. She was again eliminated for a wound on the skin underneath the noseband in riot a week ago. At least that steward was doing his job. But all this could be prevented by eliminating her every time she shows non-horse-friendly conduct. Also in November, Professor Natalie Warren held a presentation at the General Assembly of the FBI in Morocco here are some quotes I wholeheartedly agree with. Real commitment to prioritizing equine welfare is demonstrated not by what is said, but what is done. Everyone is responsible. All equestrians need to optimize and prioritize equine welfare and be seen to be doing so. Which is why I asked the FEI team to take up their responsibilities and pr better protect the horses in Equitalion. The FEI team writes me a letter signed to all to tell me off. Clearly, they did not wish to be held responsible for things happened right under their nose. I am of no further use to them, as I do not want to back them up in their promotion of LDR, so they put an end to our discussion. At the recent conference of the ISES, Professor Natalie Warren explained how the FEI should be a leader to be trusted, to be transparent, proactive and accountable. You can easily feel it. My experience? The FEI is not a good leader, not to be trusted, not transparent, not proactive, and its representatives do not want to be held accountable. In my experience, the FEI is not interested in ensuring horse welfare in sport. Two and a half months ago, I contacted GL Events to let them know we were coming to Fontainebleau to observe the warm-ups. I wrote, in September, I invited a number of judges, stewards and journalists, but several of them couldn't attend because the meeting fell at the same time at the European Championships. So I thought, if the officials can't come to the meeting, I would take the meeting to the officials. As I wish to establish a dialogue between the FEI stewards, vets, judges, organizers, riders and trainers, I have planned to be present around the warm-ups paddocks of your dressage competition in Fontainebleau on Friday 26th of April. If we can observe together what is happening in the warmer paddocks and you are willing to listen to our suggestions for rapid and effective improvements, we can achieve better protection for horses and good horsemanship well before the Olympic Games. GAL events very kindly answers. They knew we were coming to Fontainebleau and they would have been delighted to welcome us. One week ago, after two months of silence from GL events and six months after having asked if the FEI could organize a meeting, GL Event kindly proposed to organize a meeting at Fontainebleau with the International and French Federation. I answered, thank you very much for your proposal, but the subject is important and deserves time to prepare in order to set up a useful, constructive and effective exchange. Given the short time span and the meeting coming up, I have no possibility to correctly prepare for such an important meeting with the International and French Federation. Of course, I'd be delighted to exchange with you, but I'd like to be able to do so while keeping an eye on what's happening in the warm-up paddocks and remaining available to discuss it with my guests at any time, as had been planned with them for a long time. Perhaps we can arrange another meeting organized by GL events and the federations later. On the other hand, I'd be delighted to welcome a few more people to the presentations on Sunday, if you're interested. There will be time for some discussions at the end of the presentations. So Friday, observation of the warm-ups at Fontainebleau, we were like six or seven people who are here now. Almost all the riders of this CDI five stars we saw, and especially the French riders, have done a major effort to open up the frames and show a more horse-friendly conduct than when I usually observe. The responsible of GL events came to see us afterwards with two vets of their welfare committee and the contact person from the September FEI team. They insisted to have at least a small informal meeting with the French national trainer and the president of the FEI, Ingmar de Vos. This took place in a friendly and constructive manner with Liz van Ross, DVM, Annette Graaf and me. 
I again stretched that the FEI needs to bring in external experts to be continued. For today's meeting, I invited the president and vice presidents of the executive board of the IOC by mail on the 10th of March. I received no answer of any of them. What have the collective and the guest speakers done since the meeting in September? We have put the replays online, the scientific studies presented by Dr. Alice Ruel from the EFCE, who is a member of the Welfare Committee of GL Events, informed more than 10,000 people. The most, reviewed, the most viewed replay was the one from the Dutch veterinary Karen Leibrand. 20,000 people were interested to find out more about the consequences of LDR and the solutions. Maud Chatel from Reactive Ikin is working on a second survey with Professor Jane Williams and Dr. Alina Palislep. Sarah Fricotto is working on the green frame we talked about and Karen Luke has created a safe space group where we can speak up freely about problems in the horse world without being aggressed or gaslighted. The Collective Polish Four continues to observe warm-ups, alert and inform. We organize a second meeting. The theme of hyperflexion made it in the French general newspaper Le Parisien, which then led to a short documentary about horse abuse in sports on French broadcasting television in the 8 o'clock evening news. In January, I was invited to give a presentation about hyperflexion to an event of the Polish Equestrian Federation, thanks to my colleague and sister in crime at the Alliance, Alina Palislep. Last but not least, Crispin Parelis Johannesson continues to document. The Swedish sports magazine Aftonbladet has recently published an article with his pictures of high-level competition horses performing their tests with blue tongues. Which brings us up to the next topic. What happened in hyperflexion land since our meeting in September? Euro Dressage picks up again about judges burning their own, side, own social license to operate and Hellstrand loses his 2023 Dan Danish Championship bronze medal. Jovian had been treated for mild colic without prior permission from the veterinary consultant. November started well with this kind of publicities of competitions still being used. And as I mentioned earlier, the images coming from Equitalion were not exactly horse friendly. The Danish TV2 finally publishes the documentary Operation X with the images filmed by an undercover journalist in Andreas Hellström's stables. The Danish Riding Instructor Association decides to expel four of its members who could be seen in the footage of the documentary. The Danish Equestrian Federation excludes Andreas Hellström from the Danish team until the 1st of January 2025. His son can continue to ride in the Danish team, while Isabel Wert gets to ride Hellström's mare Wendy in competitions. She's even thinking of taking her to the Olympics. A Danish Animal Welfare Society reported Hellstrand and the involved riders to the police for mistreatment of horses. Patrick Kittel and his outstanding stables is a business associate of Hellstrand's Global Equestrian Group. He makes the following statement on his social media page. I strongly disapprove of all forms of violence against horses and unauthorized training methods, both in handling and riding. It is horrible and must not happen. This is Scandic, Patrick Kittel's horse during a warm-up filmed by Ipona TV a few years ago and photographed by Crispin Parilis Johannesson here on the cover of the excellent book written by Julie Taylor, I Can't Watch Anymore. These are images of a test in Equitalion in November 2023. If someone would ask me, I would say this tongue is blue. The horse does this during the test which reminds me of what happened to not so long ago to this FEI star, also been seen on a horse with a blue tongue in Aftonbladet. The combination was eliminated during the World Cup a week ago because of blood in the mouth after the warm-up. And this video made me think of another video of a rider who used excessive and prolonged LDR in our warm-ups. But we were with Patrick Kittel and his follow-up of the horse abuse seen in the documentary of his associate Andreas Hellstrand. 
Hellstrom lets him ride Jovian in competitions in his place. That's one hell of a follow-up. But in December, good news is coming from the Dutch Federation. From the 1st of April 2024, riding with a double bridle in the Z1 dressage class will no longer be allowed. From class Z2 onwards, a double bridle remains optional. In December, I also point out the presence of hyperflexion in a video of the French Equestrian Federation, promoting the riders preparing for the Olympics. These are some of the comments the rider in the promotional video thought okay to share on my Facebook page. He ridicules, belittles, gaslights, offenses and threatens. I doubt this would be in line with the FEI code of ethics nor with the Olympic ideal. Even the appearance of misconduct should be recognized as damaging to the FEI's reputation. I haven't found what the FAI thinks of threatening someone on social media or on a competition ground. This rider made it very clear to me in Aachen that his hand was aching when he recognized me standing at the fence of the warm-up arenas. An interesting detail here is that while preparing my presentation, I looked at the promotional video of the French Federation again. Christmas presentation later on this day is called The Devil is in the Details, Hidden in Plain Sight. This would be a very good example of that fact. A message to the rider and the French team. You have two options. Try to sue me and further intimidate me, or open your eyes, choose better images for your promotional videos, and even change your way of riding and coaching if you really are worried about the welfare of the horses you are responsible for. If you don't want to see it or stop it, others will see it and stop it for you. It's not only about horse welfare. It's also about fair play between riders and trainers and instructors. Luckily, we also have some good news from time to time. The French Association for Equestrian Vets held a small survey about ethics and practices in equestrian sports, adding hyperflexion as one of the subjects proposed. And still in December, the organizers of the Paris Olympics, GL Events Equestrian Sports, announced they started up a committee dedicated to animal welfare, which is working on the 46 recommendations from the French National Assembly to the Olympic Committee. Important to know is that one of the 46 recommendations is about hyperflexion. Enforce the prohibition of intentional or unintentional infliction of unnecessary suffering or discomfort of an overly contrained attitude. Prohibit neck flexions placing the nose behind the vertical throughout the Olympic grounds and apply sanctions with immediate effect for all equestrian disciplines. A few days later, my colleague, Dr. Dombreval, who had been in charge of the report of the French National Assembly, contacts me to invite me to co-sign a tribune that would be published in the press. The text was very strong. The recommendation about hyperflexion was there too. So I proposed to translate the text to English, which enabled Carolyn Haggerty from Equitopia and our alliance to ask Professor McGreevy, Dr. David Meller and Dr. Robert Cook to co-sign. A few weeks later, a mail was sent to all co-signers, only in French, by Mr. Domreval to tell us the text was slightly amended. Slightly was a huge understatement. From strong and truthful, it went to politically correct. But more importantly, one word was added in the recommendation about hyperflexion. The word prolonged. If the text was released with the word prolonged in it, this meant 18 veterinarians from Professor Jean-Marie Denois to Professor Paul McGreevy, seemingly agreed with that word being in that recommendation. So I wrote this to Mr. Domreval. I think the situation is extremely serious. You asked us to sign a text. I spent some time translating it so you could expand your reach internationally. The English-speaking people I advised you to co-sign and pe are people who trust me, who in turn have asked other people that trust them to sign this text. 
In my translation, the word prolonged did not appear. Since your signatures, you have changed the form and content of the text we signed. On the subject of hyperflexion, I don't think we lack evidence to recognize the extent of the disaster of the systematic, methodical, widespread and trivialized use of all forms of hyperflexion. How many more blue tongues, open mouths, pain faces and brutality do we have to show you before you recognize the extent of the disaster in the top-level dressage? Until we all demand zero tolerance for the use of hyperflexion, nothing will change. The word prolonged is far too vague. It's not at all suited to the current situation. The stewards can do anything with that word. They will intervene after five minutes perhaps if they're a bit brave, but the riders will then reply that five minutes is not what they call prolonged. If you add the word prolonged to a recommendation which is designed to protect horses, it has no value in the field. You've gone from taking a bold stance that has become essential in the current situation to reducing the recommendation to yet another free pass for top-level dressage riders. The word prolonged was removed on the advice of France's most renowned internationally recognized professor of equine orthopedics. And the Tribune, co-signed by 18 veterinarians, was published without the word prolonged. The French newspaper Le Parisien even gave some explanations about hyperflexion. This beautiful illustration was inspired on our Gamme des Attitudes, designed by Véronique de saint vaury and Patrick Gallou. And from there, the subjects of horse abuse in sports and hyperflexion went straight into the 8 o'clock evening news of France's second largest channel in terms of audience. Ravage sur la tête, des postures douloureuses et interdites. Des vidéos qui fuitent parfois sur les réseaux sociaux, mais qu'en est-il lors des compétitions officielles Pour le savoir, nous sommes allés en Belgique assister à un concours international de dressage avec les meilleurs cavaliers mondiaux. Nous avons rendez-vous avec une vétérinaire sensible à la cause animale. Et vous allez le voir, des pratiques pourtant interdites n'ont pas complètement disparu. La forme qu'elle fait là, c'est interdit. Interdite par la Fédération internationale, cette position de la tête enroulée vers l'intérieur, alors qu'elle doit se situer au-delà d'une ligne verticale. C'est très compliqué pour le cheval de, de respirer parce que là, son pharynx est vraiment très réduit, le diamètre est très réduit. Il y a quand même assez d'études scientifiques qui prouvent que c'est inutile et c'est nuisible pour le mental et le, et le physique du cheval. Quoi. Depuis des années, elle écume les terrains de concours et quand elle constate des mauvaises pratiques, elle interpelle les juges. J'en ai vu une, je l'ai filmée pendant bien dix minutes. Moi, je pense que là, le bien-être du cheval n'est pas du tout... Euh... C'est une question que nous allons surveiller, si ça va trop loin ou si ça va plus loin. On va d'abord discuter avec l'entraîneur. L'organisateur qui n'a pas la responsabilité des contrôles nous demande pourtant de quitter les lieux. Nous avons beaucoup de money pour faire ce lieu bien, pour faire les riders heureux, pour faire les riders heureux pour les riders heureux. Et maintenant que vous allez le faire. Nous avons décrit à la Fédération internationale les pratiques auxquelles nous avons assisté. Voici sa réponse. Les commissaires de la Fédération équestre internationale sanctionnent les cavaliers qui utiliseraient des méthodes non autorisées. Des manquements sont toujours possibles. Nous mettons en place des systèmes de surveillance plus efficaces. Within minutes, I was contacted by the steward of the FEI team. I hadn't heard since several months. I answered him that I was sorry he took it so badly and that the right of reply he demanded would be on the competition grounds where he could prove he enforces the rules. Wim Verwimp, the organizer of the show in Lier, who thought the journalists were activists, had tried to kick us out, with two friends of his looking like gorillas, pushing the cameraman and shouting, fuck off, not knowing at that time that he was aggressing a team of journalists. The Dutch equestrian magazine Horses NL had asked him why he had done that. He claimed he had kindly asked the journalists to leave because they had frightened the horses, which is not true. The journalist nor me had frightened any horse and he had tried to kick us out with physical and verbal violence because he didn't want us to film the warm-up where Patrick Kittle and Jovian were expected. And he still seemed to think he was in a position to say criticism based on moments in time is not done. I have 15 minutes of this on video. It went on for at least 20. 
you can say if you see things that are other than hyperflexion on this sequence. It's for just one minute, but I think you will see other things than just hyperflexion. Force is irregular. This is why I went to the steward for after twenty minutes of this. <clears throat> and interesting detail, his daughter won one of the tests. Doesn't that look like conflict of interest for the judges? Putting a show organizer, daughter first. February, Caesar Paris time. No words needed. And then we finish again, letting the back relax, letting the horse be normal again, normal, throw, nothing fancy. Destination contact again, over the back, through the neck, relaxing, nothing fancy. Just that he allows to relax the back, the tails relax. And of course, at the very end, the Martin moved. The sugar. You have a happy rider and a happy horse. Are you happy? He certainly got the heat off of Herstand's back. The International Dressage Riders, Trainers and Officials Club wrote a joint statement to the FEI. The horses come first, not the ego of individuals or money. The reputation of the sport has been damaged and we must work together to change this. The clubs might want to change their logos. Uh, I know what kind of training method Isabel Wert, president of the Riders Club, uses, but I never heard about the president of the Trainers Club. I found a video about 10 minutes, of which this is a representative extract. I can only hope this is just someone with the same name. Then it was time for the Gothenburg Horse Show. The warm-up was entirely live-streamed again. The big stars filmed last year did not come back, which I found very interesting. The overall picture was less bad, but stewards still did not intervene when they should have. While several equestrian federations were talking the talk, the riders, trainers and stewards on site were not walking the walk. In March, the excellent blonde dressage was asked to remove her informative videos by Clip My Horse, who found she violated copyright laws. The FAI made many people believe we had no right to film the warm-ups anymore. Pippa Coxon clarifies the situation. The FAI does not forbid filming on the field of play as such. It is only forbidden to share videos from less than 5% of FAI shows and events on personal social media and websites. One of Dr. Kinafel's scientific studies made it to the question press. Catherine will go further into the details during her presentation. At the end of March, the Swedish Eftonbladet publishes the photos of Christian Paradis Johannesson, who will talk more about this in his presentation. A month ago, I went to the Festival for Dressage in Aachen. This was a trophy of last year's winner. You can see this, warm, this rider was warming up accordingly. <laughs> you can laugh with this, it's... it's yeah, you can. He had a fair chance to win. Another horse in Aachen struggling to breathe. And it was worse when I didn't film. The trainer was standing next to me and warned his rider when I was filming. So this is how she rides when she is warned. This, this was a Frisian stallion who of course reminded me of his friend in Gothenburg's horse, horse show last year. I had talked about this horse with a very influential trainer who promotes soft LDR, like the good judge and all the others do. She had explained to me that this horse in these circumstances needed to be ridden like this because he's a stallion. He's a Frisian. You know, Frisians have inverted necks. And he was very nervous that day. The good judge came to see me there at the warm-up in Aachen. Of course, he didn't see anything wrong. 
and told me I had to concentrate more on jumping than on dressage. Here you see one of the jumping riders of the French team. He uses hyperflexion in his daily tra training sessions too. Three weeks ago, Hans Christian Matthiesen claimed it is time for change. That's a very cool statement and a very cool picture. But who is Hans Christian Matthiesen? He's the president of the international officials, judges and stewards dressage club. He is the one who trains the dressage judges, international and national. And he was head judge of the World Cup final a week ago, where Patrick Kittel won. <laughs> Sorry. For many years, Hans Christian Matthiesen has been the Danish team vet. This is a picture from Epona TV taken in 2013 after the ban on Rollkur. The horse is Akim Foldager. The rider is Andreas Hörstrand. The man from the Danish equestrian team looking at Akim Foldager being folded in two is Danish team vet and international dressage judge Hans Christian Matthiesen. Epona TV explains what happened that day. Quote, what we didn't know when we were watching Andreas Hellstrand's warm-up Akim Foldager was that the horse was actually ill, struggling with mysterious respiratory <coughs> problems. It was only when we got home that we heard on the news how Andreas Hellstrand blamed his failure to qualify for Sunday's finals on his horse being ill. Andreas Hellstrand took the medication away from his sick horse so that he could ride in the European Championships. Hellstrand had said in an interview, the horse didn't feel okay. He was blowing an awful lot. The horse just felt deflated. This is an extract from the warm-up Akim went through. This is 2013. This is more than 10 years ago. This is a public published video from Hellstrand. Epona TV further reports, the whispers were about the number of cameras on the wrong side of the fence. The concerned mumbling from Danish team vet and international dressage judge Hans Christian Matthiesen to the stewards was not about his patient turning blue in front of the world. It was about the cameras capturing the awkward evidence. Among the photographers at the warm-up arena was British-Norwegian fine art photographer Crispin Parelis Johannesson. He captured these moments in time with his camera on the day. The president of, of the judge club claims he doesn't have the tools to be able to say, hey, the horse was really stressed when you came in. That's not okay. You only get 50%. But is that true? Doesn't the judge manual say a mark shall not exceed five when there are signs of discomfort? Former FEI judge he Hege Trulsen talks about some of the challenges we are facing at the moment and how we can solve them. She says, when I started judging, every time we saw a horse that was even a little bit behind the vertical, we gave a four. Retired international dressage judge Angelika Frommen says, a permanently clearly visible behind the vertical position of the head and neck can by no means be described as correct in a dressage test. In an article, Fear of Change, Eurodressage says, activists are louder than ever before. They are, aren't they? I read somewhere the rider and stakeholders in riot came there with trembling knees because of the pressure coming from social media and photographers looking for blue tongues. In Gothenburg this year, we saw several of the big stars who had been seen on denounced for bad practices on the live stream last year, 
did not come back this year. After Lear, Patrick Kittle complains about the presence of activists searching for, quote, anything and really anything. He is slipping a little threat in here for the show organizers. If you let those activists ruin the party, I won't come back to your show. And it was no secret we were going to be at Fontainebleau. Charlotte Fry, at a certain point, said she wouldn't be there. All this is no coincidence. We have to go back to the competition grounds. The show organizers have now have the choice, letting us in or letting those who really are tearing down the sport in. The FEI still doesn't seem to get it. Did they hire someone from PETA in their communication team? This is the picture they chose as a publicity of the World Cup dressage a week ago. We still have a long way to go. This is the winner of the Blue Tongue World Cup 2024. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>